Your ego is keeping you poor as a trader. It's only the traders who learn to manage themselves and manage especially their ego that can break through to consistent profitability, that can significantly scale with funding, and that can use their trading to generate a full-time income from the markets. In this video, I'm gonna show you why it's your ego keeping you away from consistent profitability. I'm gonna show you what specifically you can do about it. And you know what? The fix isn't even that difficult. You just have to follow exactly what I share in this particular masterclass. Okay, now there's a very important concept to understand to start off. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the trader over here on the left, and we're gonna put the market over here on the right. And we need to talk about the relationship or the dynamic that goes on between the trader, yourself, and the market. And the trader can be in either one of two states, or really one of three states. The trader can be in a state of pride, self-exaggeration, and what we're gonna label the ego in today's video. And this may not be 100% accurate depending on on whose terminology is for ego, but for today's video, we're labeling the ego as the state of pride, which is a state of self-exaggeration. It's that feeling of being invincible as a trader when you puff yourself up and you self-exaggerate your own abilities. You think you're very good. You think you're better than what you actually are, really. And there's also a state of shame, a state of uh, self minimization and beating yourself up. And the truth is as a trader, you're gonna oscillate between the two. You're gonna oscillate between being in a state of pride and also a state of shame. And uh, this is what we're gonna draw out later in this lecture as the boom and bust cycle. But the truth is as a trader, you're gonna oscillate between the two and uh, they're entangled and they're related and they're um, they, they, they come together. And it's very important to understand that dynamic, which we're going to explore more. But as a trader, you can also be in a state of equilibrium, in a state of balance and poise, and in a state of being who you truly are in that moment. So as a trader, you can be in a state of equilibrium and poise. You can be in a state of pride, self-exaggeration, going on an ego trip, or you can be in a state of shame and self-minimization. Now, let's talk about how those three states affect your relationship with the market and how you view the market and how you trade the market. If you puff yourself up into a state of self-exaggeration, into a state of pride in an ego trip, which typically happens after a winning trade, right? You take a win and you puff yourself up. You feel very good and you feel like nothing can stop you now and you feel invincible. What tends to happen when you're in that self-exaggerated state is... This is self-exaggeration. You're puffing yourself up. What tends to happen is you then force your ideas and your agenda into the market. You project low quality setups onto the market. You tell the market that the market should be going here by this time and you think it's gonna happen by this time. And in this state, you're not trading your plan. You're not trading your processes. This little revolution here is what we're gonna to refer to as your emotions. Your emotions revolve and they, they go back and forth, they oscillate between negative and positive because of laws of contrast. But when you're poised in a state of equilibrium, that's a state of that encompasses both polarities. It's, it's not a polarized state. And in that state, you're executing on your process. So when you're in an ego-tripped, self-exaggerated state, you're not trading your plan or your trading processes. It's the amygdala, and we've talked a lot about the amygdala in, in, on my YouTube. It's the amygdala acting out of impulse, typically out of greed, an impulse for greed. So it wants more and it's projecting what it wants onto the market. It's telling the market what it wants and forcing an idea onto the market. Now, the truth is the market's never wrong. And the market always needs to be listened to and respected because if we're imposing an idea onto the market, the market's not ready to move in that direction in that certain amount of time, then we're gonna take a loss in the market. So it's important to recognize that if you're in a state of self-exaggeration, feeling invincible in this ego trip, then you're gonna project onto the market, you're not gonna to stick to your trading plan, and you're gonna ultimately take losses. Now, 
if you're in this state of self-minimization and shame, then the market may actually present opportunities to you that align with your trading plan, but you're in a state of fear and avoidance and you're not taking those positions because of this self-minimized state of fear. And by the way, this self-exaggerated state leads to greed. And uh, in this self-minimized state, because you're not taking the opportunities the market presents to you, you too are not executing on your trading plan or your trading processes. You're in a state of emotion, in a state of instinctively trying to avoid the pain of losing, a pain that you just experienced prior, and you don't want to stick to your trading plan, you don't want to take the trade because of fear. So in states of both shame and pride, fear and greed, self-minimization, self-exaggeration, ego, self-minimization, you're not sticking to your trading plan, you're not consistently executing your plan, and as a result, you're never gonna build consistent profitability. So the reason your ego is keeping you poor is because your ego is leading you to projecting unrealistically onto the market, forcing your ideas onto the market, taking trades that aren't even part of your plan, taking trades that are very low quality out of the thought of thinking they're gonna be profitable because of this uh, unrealistic expectation you're imposing on the market. It's the traders who learn to manage to quiet down their ego, get back to a state of equilibrium and poise and presence with the market, where they're actually listening to the market and they're present with the real market, they're not above or below the market, they're present with the market, they're listening to it and asking, and they're, they're curious, what's the market doing right now? What's it communicating to me? Because the market's always communicating something in terms of price over time. And it's only when you're in a state of equilibrium and balance and present with the market that you can actually listen to that and you can actually take that on board. Whereas if you're above the market or below the market, you're not gonna to listen to that because of your, your emotions are stronger than your than your rational mind in that point in time and they're clouding your judgment so when the mark when you're present with the market when you learn to quiet down your ego when you're present with the real market when the market presents an opportunity to you you reciprocate by executing on the trade that's part of your plan and it's only in that state that you build consistent profitability and make money over a long period of time as a trader that's why i promote process-based thinking that's the process Whereas the emotions are focused on the outcome. It's all outcome based. Hope that makes sense. Okay. So this is why your ego is keeping you poor. Is because of this process. Because when you're proud and self-exaggerating, you're not sticking to your trading plan. This is part one. Now let's understand more deeply. We'll do three parts today. More deeply how this translates to the boom and bust cycle. Now, many traders are familiar with what the boom and bust cycle is, but this little diagram here can actually be, can be drawn out in a very different way. And instead of oscillating from left to right, from pride to shame, positive to negative, ego to self-minimization, I've just put the diagram on the, on stretched it out in terms of, of a, of a chart. So, as a trader, if you go into this state of pride, positive ego, which you get from after typically after winning trades, and we're going to we're going to talk about this more in the solution part at the end of this video, then what typically happens is you then start to force ideas onto the market, project low quality setups, and then you start to take loss, 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 and you go so far into loss into the bust cycle. This is this is the boom on the, on the left, this is the bust on the right that you finally realize that, you know what, I just need to focus on taking quality setups as part of my trading plan. And then you reevaluate and you only stick to high quality setups and then you start to go boom, 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 start to take wins and you let that go to your head. You go into this state of pride, self-exaggeration, uh, ego trip, and you start to force ideas onto the market again and then you go, the cycle repeats. So the reason why your ego is keeping you poor is because your ego is keeping you stuck in the boom and bust cycle. It's only the traders who learn how to manage their ego and learn how to manage winning that can break out the boom and bust cycle because then what they do is they, they, they transcend this whole idea of outcome, positive and negative. They don't focus on that. All they focus on is the central path of 
sticking to their trading plan. And that day, whether they win or lot, win or lose, doesn't really matter to them. They don't care about the outcome of that individual day. They just focus on sticking to their trading plan every single day and building momentum with that. Okay, so part three, how can we actually implement solutions to minimize the ego and to stick to your trading plan really is, is, is the goal here, okay? Now, there's a few things. The first thing to recognize is that the ego tends to get puffed up and exaggerated when after a few wins and a winning streak. So there's a set of questions that I teach my six-figure traders that they have in their back pocket whenever they're winning or whenever they're losing to bring them back to that set of equilibrium. And really, the questions look something along the lines of, I teach the questions in detail in the 12-week program, but the questions are along the line of, after you win, because you know you're in this state of self-exaggeration, you have to have questions that bring you back to that state of equilibrium, who you truly are, that trader in that moment. So the questions after you win that you want to be asking yourself is, what did I overlook? What are the risks? What are the drawbacks in this situation? Or what are the what are the disadvantages? And you start to make yourself aware of the other side of the drawbacks in that moment. And you can remind yourself that typically when you take big, big wins, you become less teachable and less open and you stunt your growth. And you start to force low quality setups into the market. And that you think you figured it out. So you're not you're not receptive to ideas and new growth and all that type of stuff. So you want to start to make yourself aware of the drawbacks and risks of winning, not to push yourself into that state of shame, but really to keep yourself humble and in a state of equilibrium and away from this state of being in an ego trip. And really the process is around humbling yourself so that you can stick to your trading plan. So that when you show up the next day, you're not in this self-exaggerated ego state projecting onto the market, but you've brought yourself back down to the state of equilibrium and you're just sticking to your trading plan, okay? That's a big part of managing your ego. That's number one. Number two is managing your expectations before a trade. Because if before a trade, you're caught up in your ideas of what you think is gonna happen next, you're only gonna feed the ego, and you're only gonna exaggerate and, and uh, give the ego something to bite onto. So what you want to be doing is you want to become aware of any expectations you have on the outcome of an individual trade. And you want to be grounding those expectations with a questioning process of reminding yourself that nobody has any idea of what's going to happen next in the market. And nobody needs to. What one must be focused on is consistently executing on their processes. And I have the free Bulletproof Your Mindset tool in the description, which helps you actually implement that process and ground your expectations. Completely free, first thing in the description. The next part of managing your ego is making sure you have a trading plan in the first place. The ego feeds off the amygdala, the emotional brain. And the more you come into trading with these ideas of what you think is going to happen and what you want to happen next in the market, and the more you're activating your amygdala, the more likely you are to force ideas onto the market out of this ego trip. Whereas if you have a trading plan, a trading process that you know is grounded, and that you can consistently execute on, then you go from the state of executing on emotions to the state of executing on process and you quiet down the ego, okay? If you don't already have a trading plan, I have the exact trading plan I give to my six-figure traders in the link in the description for free. Make sure you download that and fill that in so that you have every single component that you need for a trading plan. But if you don't have a trading plan, then you're more likely to be emotional driven by your ego, and you're more likely to be stuck in the boom and bust cycle. And the fourth idea I'd love to share in managing your ego is putting your wins in perspective. It kind of ties in with the first point here, but if you're getting all puffed up and feeling really good over one win, put that one win in a larger sample space and recognize that that one win is probably making up for some losses of the past or some losses of the future. And the truth is you're gonna win and lose as a trader. And it's not about that one individual win, but it's rather about putting that win or loss in the larger sample space of 100 to 1,000 trades and recognizing that you're just executing on, a, on, a, on an edge. You may be taking three steps forward here to then take one step back, to then take two steps forward, two steps forward, to then take four steps, 
you know, three, three steps back, whatever it is. But the point here is that you need to put that win in perspective because sometimes we can exaggerate how good that is that feeds the ego when in fact it's making up for some losses of the past or some wins or some losses in the future, which is just us executing on our probability sequence. So put that one win in the greater, greater scheme of things in the greater sample space and you'll recognize that that win really isn't that big of a deal. It's just you, the importance, and it highlights the importance of you sticking to your trading plan, okay? So these are my ideas on why your ego is keeping you poor and what you can do about it. Found it useful? Like, comment, subscribe, share it with your trading friends and your trading communities, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.